So hi, I'm Nicole Brewer of Hamptons.com Main Street Series. I'm here in the beautiful John Deere Theater at Guild Hall, and my guest today is Colin Quinn. He's here at Guild Hall with his show, Long Story Short, The History of the World in 75 Minutes or Less, but I hear it's running a little long. Oh, really? Because there's too much laughter. Oh, well, that's good. That's, you yeah. don't have to work on that. Exactly. So how, how did the show come about? Well, I just was doing stand-up for, you know, 105 years. Yes. And then I was like, oh, I want to do something thematic and something about the world and, you know, like big picture, but still do stand-up. So mm -hmm. that's how I started thinking about it. So I started working it out in Long Island and, uh, you know, first shows I did was in, the, was in Levittown at Governor's and in uh, Wantour, at Be in Belmore mm -hmm. at the uh, uh, brokerage. So comedy clubs there, so those guys let me use those places. Then I started doing it in the city at Gotham Comedy. Then I did it at, um, then I brought it to, then Jerry, me, friends. Seinfeld. Seinfeld. Yeah. And then he goes, um, you're doing that show? And I go, yeah. And he goes, I'll produce it, which was nice. And then I weaseled him into directing it. So then. <laughs> so what's it like working with Jerry? Now uh, you guys have been friends for a while, obviously. Yeah. We've been and we're still friends, which, okay. uh, you know. Working relationship hard. that can go either way. Yeah, that's exactly right. But um, yeah, I mean, he's, you know, he's, he's, perci he's a precise guy. He's mm -hmm. just like he is on the show, as they say. <laughs> and, um, but he's great. I mean, he really, he really took to it. I mean, he, put, he puts everything into everything he does. So he put everything into this and never made a dime out of it. In fact, I think he lost money doing it. But well, good. How's that care. working out? He's working out that... Uh, he's still, yeah. It's working out for him? Yes, he's still doing well. <laughs> I was doing a little research on the show because I saw the premiere on HBO and it oh, was yeah. hysterical. Thanks. And I had to watch it a few times because I missed half of it. I was laughing so hard. Oh, good. And I'm going to have to come to Guild Hall to see it a few times because I'm sure that'll happen again. Oh, I love it. <laughs> and let's see. Folks, uh, the New York Times and Variety... Theater Mania all say you're hilarious. I think they're downplaying that because it is just insanely funny. Thanks. That's how we describe it. Um, wow. The way that you walk through history, the way you're talking about, you know, the Great Wall of China being, how did you put it, uh, one people, one country, one haircut. Right, right. So Africa, 55 countries, all divided. Halfway around the world, their exact polar opposite, China. One country, one people, one haircut. <laughs> China, China's drug was work, as we all know. They never stopped working. That's why the Great Wall is so long. What, what were some of the other things that, you know, it starts with the Greeks. Right. And somehow you get to Snooki. <laughs> but at least their plays were nobility, kings and queens, epic plays. Antigone on her knees crying over the loss of her dead brother. Not Snooky on Oni's crying over the loss of her cell phone. <laughs> like, where is everybody? Where's my cell phone? I hate this house. Where's my cell phone? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How does well, that happen? <laughs> well, Snooky just being our entertainment, where theater has come, you know, where mm -hmm. we used to watch, you know, these nobility and all these plays about, you know, Antigone, and now we're watching Snooky. Yeah, it all, uh, it all stays the same. Now, do you constantly keep working on the show, new material all the time? Sure. So this is the history of the world. It's human nature at its best and its worst. Right. What, what are some of the best parts of human nature that you feel through the show? What do you see? Um, the best parts of human nature, I mean, look, we built, I mean, somebody, the f some people actually came up with all these things, lights, cameras, buildings. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Right. The worst part is that we fall for human frailty, like the Wiener situation or whatever, you know what I mean? Like we still can't change. You know, it's all about gossip and, you know, lying and all this kind of stuff that goes on and lust and, you know what I mean? Like those, the seven deadly sins never change in humanity. Mm -mm. But we do all these high tech things that are just amazing, but we're still the same, you know? So you're still the same guy that you were back in Brooklyn as a kid? No, no. of course not. No, I am. Of course, I'm going to say yes. Everybody, but that's the other thing about the show. Everybody thinks they have this. They never look at themselves and go, "Oh, I'm part of the problem." We all think, "No, I'm one of the good ones. I'm one of the people that doesn't think that." Mm -hmm. So that's the other problem with society. Because you're a big star now. You know? I'm big. You're big. You're in huge. the Hamptons. That's right. You having fun in the Hamptons? I mean, as a kid growing up in Brooklyn, did you want to, you know, I'm going to be a big star someday. I'm going to make it to the Hamptons. I'm going to be on the stage. This is my town now. No, I didn't even know they had this theater. To be honest with you, <laughs> I mean, I, you know. I mean, I'm, you know, but I love it. It's kind of prestigious in a way. Mm -hmm. So while you're out it here, it feels good. What are you doing while you're out here? 
How do you enjoy your time? In the, are you surfing? Are you hitting the beach? Do you have No, I'm afraid that? to go in the water because everybody says how cold it is. I keep going. I'm, I keep telling everyone, I'm going to the ocean. Everybody goes, what are you, crazy? It's freezing there. It's not freezing. It's 95 really? degrees outside. No, in the water. It's, uh, it's a little colder. I can't imagine going to the beach and not going in the water. You have to do it. So let's see, what else are you doing while you're here in the Hamptons? Are, are you going anywhere? Do you have any local haunts that you really No, I don't know. I mean, here? what is there to do? You know, unless you're like 18, you go to clubs. No Otherwise clubs you for you? bust around. Now those days are over. I used to go to the clubs years ago, back in the day, when they had all those clubs. And I remember, I remember the names of all the clubs in the Hamptons. Mm -hmm. The Cruiser Club, Marrakesh, Le Mans, uh, OBI. Does OBI still exist? They're all gone. OBI, yeah, they're all gone. All gone. So let's talk about you a little more. Um, when it comes to comedy, who are some of your inspirations? Who did you really, as a kid, look up to and say that? George Collin, cool of do. course, because he was like the Irish comedian that we were just like blown away. My whole family loved. We used to listen to George Collin's album all the time. Mm -hmm. And then Richard Pryor, of course, you know, he was the other like most influential comedian of, you know, when you grow up, you listen to Richard Pryor albums. Mm -hmm. And um, those are my two, those are my two most influential ones. I have to say, I listened to them a um, hundred times. But even just watching guys on TV, like you'd watch like David Brenner. And I remember seeing this guy like David Brenner with like a leather jacket with an open shirt with gold chains and a, like a shag haircut. And I was like, yeah, he could be like cool and be a comedian like this guy, you know? It's so funny, like Brenner was like, oh, he's on a Tonight Show, he's always dressed nice, you know? Mm -hmm. So I mean, but it was mostly, Carlin and Pryor for me. Carlin and Pryor. Yeah. Who are some of your favorite uh, impressions that people always say, oh, do so and so for me? Or who do you like to? Are you working on anybody right now? No, just Irish people. I just like doing Irish people. I just like their attitude when they speak. Like that. After I have to they speak a little bit. Like they're just very cynical. I just, you know, I like how quick they speak. Mm -hmm. And uh, somebody told me this. I heard this old Irish lady, Carmel Quinn, who's a singer. And she did a joke about how Irish people, she goes, here's how Irish people, here's how an Irish woman takes a compliment. She goes, oh, you're beautiful, darling. She goes, oh, shut up. It's so funny. I love that kind of stuff. <laughs> now, you talk a lot about family in your show, too, about on the way to a wedding. Right, about bad-mouthing and all that stuff, right? Mm -hmm. It was just that a family wedding did the same thing. Yeah. So I as mean, I'm watching your piece, I'm thinking, yes, you know, on the way to a wedding, how you do look at all those little bits of humanity and how you interact. It's unbelievable. I mean, we still, I mean, I wrote the piece, and I still do it. I mean, it's like bad mouthing is really one of the most underrated drugs as far as it really is a drug mm -hmm. where people just get into like talking about other people. And you, you know, you, you can almost catch yourself doing it, but you're still doing it. It's one of those. That's why I think that's one of the seven deadly sins too: slander, calumny, all that stuff, mm -hmm. you know. So with the show, what are you still working on? What's what's coming? What um, haven't we seen yet in the show? What are you adding to it? I'm going to try to add. I haven't added it yet. Well, I had to get it back down. You know, I haven't done it in a couple of months. But adding like, you know, all the Arab Spring stuff, wherever that's going to go. I mean, that's that's still up in the air, really, what's happening. Nobody even realizes, what, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. like all the different Arab countries, are they going to go somewhere separately or together? I guess that's the big question people would like to know. Well, if the world's going to end in 2012. Yes. You know, so there's, there's I guess there's a little clock on that. So how's that going to fit into everything, do you think? I feel like I feel like I should have explored. It's a good question to ask. It's the one thing that I really do feel like with the Mayans, I'm not exploring that as deeply as I should. So now while you're here on the beach, you can go to the beach, not go in the water and work on that part a little bit. Oh, no, maybe I'll go in the water. Maybe if I go in the water, I'll see some marine type of, you know, revelation. Mm -hmm. Some like half, you know, demonic figure, half fish that will give me some answers for this. <laughs> I wish you a lot of luck with that. Thanks. I can't wait to see the show. Thanks. Now beyond, uh, What's it like taking a stage in a theater intimate like this as opposed to other places? What do you, you know, you've done Broadway, you've done off Broadway, now you're on the beach. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, it's, so far it's great. I mean, it's, it is intimate, but it's like, it's got like a, you know, I guess because the ceilings are so high, it's got a really, you know, it's got like a big theatrical feel to it. But, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, I've been doing stand up and stuff my whole life, so I'm always used to being in front of a crowd. So it's like, there's no, it's not like I'm like, oh, this is different from that. It all feels like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You're still trying to evoke la laughter. Like, no matter where I am, right. if it's eight people or a thousand or something, it's still trying to get them to laugh. It's the same goal. So it kind of takes you away from, like, you don't think about, like, oh, is this going on? You're just like, hey, got to get this room going, you know? Now, when it comes to theater versus movie or TV, which do you prefer the most? Well, I mean, theater is the most exciting. Obviously, you're going to get high off it, you know? So when, the other things you don't get high of, you just do it, like, you know. You know, when you're done with the show, what's, what's your, 
uh, get ready routine like and, and like cool down? How do you get ready for the show? Um, I don't know. I mean, I just sit in the back, just talk to everybody. The same thing I do to get ready for anything, just bust chops and, you know, sit around. I mean, nothing in particular. Well, you're getting ready for opening night. That's yeah. uh, this Friday night. Yeah. Big opening. You ready to go? Big opening. We're going to party at Spielberg's house afterwards. There you go. I wish you a lot of luck with the show. Thanks. I can't wait to see it. Have a lot of fun. Thanks. For Hamptons.com Main Street Series, I'm Nicole Brewer with my guest, Colin Quinn. He'll be here at Guild Hall through the end of June, June 26th. Get your tickets now.